So count to three and do the business. Who's counting? So one, two, two three. three. If that was to hit you in the stomach or the chest, I would think you would have very little chance of recovering. <laughs> okay, we changed targets. Yep. So the, the actual shoot haven't changed, but the targets have changed, and that's going to enable us now to put three people on the point instead of the the number from the left hand side and obviously the left hand target there is target one center target is now as target two and target three on the extreme right so the <coughs> details now until you are told otherwise are target one mr curtis two mr miller three mr wilmot followed by one mr moore two mr morovic any questions on your details Did. I want you to reload quickly, or as quickly as you can at this stage, and without standing up to your full height and then reducing again, I want you to get yourself in position, lock home in position, and make sure that you put a deliberate pair of shots, well controlled, into the target each time. Okay? First three then, please, if you'll come up on the point. <coughs> Adjust your muffs and your glasses. Do you gentlemen have earmuffs or plugs? Okay. Muffs and glasses with six rounds standing low. Put back, draw the weapon, open the weapon up, keep the gun tilted down with the barrel pointing towards the target. Six rounds. Get into the system now. One round in, rotate the cylinder. One round, rotate. Anything you drop, remember, gets picked up before the gun is closed. A good draw weapons position. The gun in the centre of the body, finger clear of the trigger at this stage. This is a 10 round sense of direction shoot. That is your indication to place your finger on the trigger. Concentration on the target. Paired shots in your own time starting now. Check. Take it nice and easy. Check. Rotate, rotate, rotate. Check. Close properly. Finger on the trigger. Only as high as you need. Steady. Okay, unload stand. Release your rod. Clear. Holster. Grip. Close. Stop. Check. Check. Bang, bang. Heaven forbid. Heaven forbid the day after two of them. Nicely done. Pick up your live rounds. Not close it exactly. Just no, 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 that much stronger than that one. All right. Well, you know, you in in which case, it, if, <laughs> be aware that you are beginning to squint. Yeah. And if that squint turns to an eye closed, it means then you've lost half your vision and you'll begin. Okay. Catch him out. White cap is on white, obviously. Check. Here we go. Where it is. Where you go through with a gun. Think of that. You know, the muzzle of the gun, the barrel of the gun, as your finger. Hands, adjust your muffs and glasses, and with six rounds standing, load. Drop your foot back, lift the gun from the holster, open, and load. Get into the system, nine o'clock and rotate, nine o'clock and rotate. Try and bring the gun a little as opposed to anywhere else. Grip, close, under control, nice firm grip into the draw weapons position. All right, check that position to make sure that it is in the center of the body, with the finger clear of the trigger. If you were to be able to fire now, you should be able to hit the person directly in front of you, in this case, the target. Yeah. Concentration on the target. 
This is a 10 round sense of direction shoot. Pair shots in your own time, starting now. To the right, you see? Don't yeah. worry about that. Don't load into your hand. Stop. Check. One, two. Now the gun is twisted to the right. Yeah? That's why they're predominantly to the right. Then you've got the clicks. I don't want you to let it throw. I want you to push the gun in the centre, lock it so that it's in the centre of that and fire off two good pair. Are you ready? Go! Good man. Thank you. Unload. Thank you. Hold on. We're clear on the left. Clear on the right. Nice clearing positioning. Buckle up. The line is clear. Move forward. Check your target. That's where you've come down on right, that one. Right. And that's where you just didn't kind of uh, say to yourself, stop and check. Yeah, you've got a and you'll just go down. That's not bad, is it? It's better than last time. Better than last time, yeah. Start it off on this one. Seven, eight, where are they? It's just cutting there. Nine. Just make yourself. Stop. And now go on. OK, that's well done. Yeah, patch those out, please. Down with the gun, not down with Hello, Mr O'Brien. <coughs> uh, tennis score. Tennis score. We give you that one. Standing load. Foot back. It's good. Using the nine o'clock position to start, then rotating the cylinder with the thumb. Rotate the cylinder and load. Each time you put one in, take a check at your target at the same time. Have a look up. Every now and again. Good habit to get into. Remain in the draw weapons. This is a 10 round sense of direction shoot. Paired shots in your own time. Starting now. OK. There's only one way round that. Keep the muzzle pointing towards the target. Lift the gun, push down on the rod, fingernail behind, pull him out, release the rod. Check your target as you're reloading. Now stay in that position, grip, push, hold, steady. Keep going, keep going. Good man, unload. Yep. Now, the reason you're doing that is to push it down under the back. Well, you've got 12 there, actually. Yes. We're not going to worry about that. Now, you rolled through happily enough, and what happened eventually there was that you got the bad one. It was a bad reload, wasn't it? Yeah. You put the hole in the wrong spot. So you're going to with a click, 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 bang. Yeah. yeah. Or rather, a bang, bang, bang. Mm -hmm. Click, click. But it was a good position. Uh, all right. Other than that, watch your unload. Make sure you're not pushing down on that rod too hard. Push them out. Okay. Press on then. It's a same shoot as you had there before. A ten round double action aim shoot from one position. That's standing supported against the barrier. And again, I'll remind you of the salient points. Or in fact, you can tell me. What are, then, the three points as far as aim shooting that we mentioned before? Yeah. One part of the chest? Yes, indeed. The point of aim, the centre part of the chest. But the one point of aim for each shot, which is what the man meant. Concentration on the sights is imperative. You must concentrate on the sight. Those of you there before, the foresight with the rear sight. So make sure that these sights are perfect at the... It is imperative, again, that you squeeze this trigger and feel that you're squeezing the trigger in one movement, no jerkiness, so that you have full control of the weapon. When that hammer goes forward and fires the round, your concentration must be 100% on that foresight. The target, indeed, at that stage is blurred. It's in your secondary vision. 
having already made the identification, you're now putting down one deliberate aim shot. And I want you to do that 10 times. Any questions on the shoot? It's blotting the center of the target. It's no longer that black piece, it doesn't exist. With the <coughs> white spot there, you should pick up a perfect sight picture. Okay, come up into the aim. Settle yourself against the barrier. Left hand against the barrier. Nice, stable position. It's a 10 round, double action aim shoot. In your own time, starting now. Okay, then take it nice and easy. Good concentration. Oh, that's on that trigger. Nice and steady. Nice and steady. We're going a little bit low left. Yeah. I want that last one to be down there in the centre. Smooth out now. A little bit harsh at the end. Smooth out the a little harsh. Throw them right out behind you. Get rid of them. Don't worry about that. Don't forget to count your Keeping the gun towards the target. Sight stop. Control that trigger action. A little bit harsh. Try and smooth it out. Do you want to uh, hold this for too long or? If you could come up the position on this one, this gentleman, if you could come up from the position. Let me relax. Yeah, relax on the left end. On. And again, please. Right, James. A 15 minute, fairly short, but graphic description and uh, also a view of just how dangerous and effective is this shotgun. The particular shotgun I've got here is the Force Issue shotgun used by ourselves and the Force Riflemen. But if you think about the sporting gun that you see Prince Andrew when he's out killing the pigeons there, if you think about that fairly long barreled effort and compare it with that range of lengths of shotgun barrel you can get. This is possibly the most common type of weapon that you're going to come across as far as the villain is concerned. It's the easiest to get hold of. It's very easy to doctor down to the sawn off version version here. I'll introduce to you to the weapon to start with. Here we go, it is clear. It is clear. Everybody see the assembly? This is the running. You will see that it only has one barrel. And this is a tube magazine. So inside the magazine, you have a number of extra rounds which you can feed into the chamber and fire as fast as you can rack and pull the trigger. Still quite compact. And we'll go back to the classroom after this and I'll show you any ideas you had about a wide corner shot from a shotgun. Forget it. At close quarters, as you will see now, it puts up these, lean into it, bend forward slightly, and as it goes off, you're just going to let it rock you back. All right. Finger on the trigger. There's nothing in there. Gently squeeze off. There you go. Rack the action back. Hold it back. Muffs and specs. Don't rack it forward till I say so. Keep the weapon pointing safely down the range. 
Right the action forward. I want you to come up uh, in the chicken drumstick. You see the chicken drumstick on the reverse side? I want to make sure you're sure that. Uh, when you're ready, just squeeze gently on that trigger. Constant trigger. Man size width, you see at seven yards, the whole pattern of shot has landed on the target. What have we got here? What's that clean little hole there? Clean it hole. Even the wadding can penetrate ply at that range. Tremendous power. How far do you think we could go back before we. 300. Anybody else? In actual fact, if you went back to 30 yards with that particular weapon, it probably would not penetrate this ply. Dynamic it is, the further it'll go. But each tiny little light individual ball loses its effect fairly quickly. Even the rifled slug, because it's not truly aerodynamic, will lose energy fairly fast. But we're talking about that. When I'm moving up one to the buckshot, or SG, small game. <coughs> Eight or 12 balls coming out of the shotgun in excess of 1,200 feet per second. Here you come, pick up the weapon. Muffs and specs first. Muffs and spec. Up into the aim. Take up a point of aim on his belt buckle. Okay, and gently squeeze the weapon. Rack it back. Quite happy. Don't rack it forward till I say so. You're going to come up on his belt buckle. Muffs and specs, rack the action forward. Three, three inches in diameter, roughly, hitting the target at the same time into the body cavity at once. Would it penetrate a car door? Yes. Mm. Yes? It would go through the skin of a car door. So that's how effective that stuff is. If that was to hit you in the stomach or the chest, I would think you would have very little chance of recovering. Back the action forward. Up in the aim, and gradually squeeze one over. Quite happy. OK, right the action back. You're not safe there. Eh? You might get wet, or you might get hot. Uh, gently squeeze it away. Right the action back. Good. Just sort of turn it round so that's The effect of shotgun and also as a sideline before we start penetration proper, handguns, a couple of handguns as well. And in fact, this is an incident where purely handguns were involved. 1983, in an ordinary semi detached building in Croydon, was the legitimate holder of several handguns. I'll show you the uh, selection of ammunition and weapon that he had in a moment. Raising the bloke inside by a uh, loud hailer and I hope in the next lesson to show you just how dangerous are self-loading pistols. That was his weaponry, that was his ammunition. And this was the scene that beheld the team that did the initial search. I was going to give that one the road with it goes up. Um, well, those guys have come to our park, come back in bags. We store them here, and then as they're sorted and cleaned, they've all got to be cleaned out uh, to remove the, the burned powder. Mm. Having uh, removed them, we bring them in here. They're all sorted because they've all got to be around for them in a minute. Mm. But we get back, and he sorts them all out by hand at the moment, mm. and wait for a machine that sorts them out by. Uh, mm. uh, I thought you'd evaluate by, by marking them like pigeons or something, you know. With mm -hmm. Okay. Like that, it's, um, Just add the, add the one hand to the other. Uh, yeah, it's that way. We haven't even got room to put in the extra sorting machine. Yes. Yeah. The next stage checks that there's nothing inside the case. The next stage punches out the, um, punches out the primer, mm. 
holds it down and checks that the bottom is empty and clean. The next one holds it down and pushes a primer in from the bottom, which comes through on a shuttle, which you can just see comes through there. What a secret. And then the final one crimps it. And then it's thrown out and you receive your finished round. There's one, two, three, four, five fronts. There's five uh, ports in the front. A small window. Yeah. And then that window on the right. Five open.
ครับWhat do you want to know? One one from the green side. I can't see it that far. About three feet. Three feet. Doors Control opening. From Doors point. opening. Control from point six. We have open door point one three. Uh. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and count to four, four and then say it. Right, okay. okay. You're coming through, Jim. Oh. I'm going to have to switch on the face up. Okay. Okay, gents, if you've done your briefing and talking amongst yourselves, when you open that door, you're in play. Carry on when you're ready. Good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Take bits and pieces off, Jim. So just relax. Take a chair each and. Uh... <laughs> if you prove your guns one at a time, please, and take them from me. If you see anything that you feel this should be brought out, bring it out yourselves. The last couple of doors, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, of people behind you. So, I mean, if there were any movement whatsoever, you would hear it in front of you anyway. If there were any, any movement in front of you, it's so quiet yeah. that you would hear it. 
Okay. So I, there were one or two occasions I would accept that. that I looked round behind me to see how far they'd got or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it was, so, as I say... It's a little bit false here because it is. it does tend to be a bit quieter. If you're, let's say, um, somewhere off the west way, where well, you've got motorway yeah, traffic that's, rumbling that's, along all the yeah. time, then you're going to have those other noises in the background anyway. I think I was also be able to look in back in the direction. Yeah, of the it's a common just fault. To, just to keep... You know, it's one of those things, but it's something that we bring out. The thing is, like, it's a natural reaction to look behind you. You know, you know yeah. you've gone through those rooms and you know they are... That's so, right. Is you still have this thing, okay, even if you... Um, you get under the bed before you've got in the room, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've done that on the, the, the mirror. Yeah, that's fine. The other thing was, not that door so much, but the other door that was blocked with the carpet. Yes. Um, and a couple of doors bounced back on us as well. Which is why you had the wedges. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, yes. But yeah. the thing was, we were thinking of the wedges for the fire doors. Yes. And the idea of those doors, they were supposed to stay. Yeah, true. You're making good use of your cover here. Plenty of mirror work. What could you use if you hadn't got a mirror? Say you had suddenly pulled out. You haven't got a mirror. <laughs> what we've got here, fellas, is a, a safe area which we've consolidated. And these are a series of rooms which represent the hotel corridor and the rooms going off it. It's a hold of the rooms until you establish contact with anyone who's in there, or until you determine that the area is in point of fact clear. You cover me again, I'll go past the first two rooms. Yes, I'll right. take the right hand side. I'll cover the corridor as, as the door opens. If you swing it open and wedge yeah. it again. Yeah, if, if, if you me, give the door a push. I'll go the door open. Then okay. I'll uh, cover me once it's open. Okay, go first. Do the business. Okay, we're running. Okay, action. <laughs> That's right, switch on now. You're just looking at you. Okay, okay. Anyway. okay fine, please. Okay, call them. Okay, switch off. Okay, I'm running, do the business. Not like that, we're That was uh, not pretty good. We're running. Go. Okay. I'll just jump in a bit. Yeah, nothing that count to three and do the business. Spin it round. Spin it round towards me. Other way, that's it. Round that way, the way you're going, that's it. That's it. Move it slightly. Spin it, wonderful. Okay. Oh, the sorry sound department, they've got to talk to, to, to tell the guys no, what to do. We're up, we're up against a yeah. deadline. Shut the hell, chap. Alright, if you look at me and I'll just chat to you. 
finish this over, I'm going to go straight up to the Owl and uh, <laughs> go into the bar there and um, get a pint of beer as fast as possible, and you're going to go to lunch, I suppose. And yeah, it's it. Stop. Okay, fine. It doesn't matter if we can get it wrong. Fine. Go can I ask it. you, what did you think of that course you've just been on? Very interesting. Made you think it was uh, very worthwhile. Have you ever done anything like that before? Yes, there's uh, obviously continuous training. What did you find most challenging about what we were doing in there? The fact that you were okay. uh, Hang on, sorry, wait till you start rolling. I'll ask you the question. Okay. okay. Go for what it. did you find most challenging about uh, what you did in there? The fact that it was the realist. Uh, you could actually get to an actual real situation. The fact that uh, the way the rooms were set up was as uh, real as you could ever get in a training situation and that the press pressure is on you. Have you ever been in a situation like that for real life before? Uh, doing room searches, yes. Okay, stop the steps, mate. Click it. What did you think of the course you've just been on? I thought it was very good. It's uh, very important to try and uh, ensure that training is as realistic as possible. And I think uh, putting under a certain amount of pressure uh, on video is always a good idea. So you can actually reflect and uh, view what, uh, what you should have done and what you might change in the future. Do you think that would help you in the future if you're in a situation similar to that? Oh yes, I think it's very important to rehouse and to you get it absolutely right. And I think uh, looking at what uh, your mistakes have been, then that's obviously got to be a good idea for the future. What did you think of the course you've just been on? Oh, it's very good. It's a vast improvement on what you've done in the past. Um, I've obviously spent a lot of time and money setting this one up. Um, each room has got a different aspect of problems you're going to account when you do it in real life. And very worthwhile. Do you feel more confident now, now you've done that, that uh, in a future situation you might have a better idea of what to do or how to tackle something? Slightly more confident, uh, not to any great extent though, because uh, in real life you know there's someone in there waiting for you, and uh, I don't think you can ever get that close to uh, reality to give you that, that extra amount of confidence uh, to go straight in and carry on without any problems. On the television we see policemen bursting straight into rooms and uh, and it seems to be a lot less thought out and obviously it's quite a careful process that you have to go through to, to survey and go into a room like that. That's right, yeah. You're going into rooms as they do on the TV and it's, it's just, you know, it's crazy. It's good entertainment. Uh, probably gets the viewers sitting there thinking you know, it's all uh, excitement but uh, in real life you, it's you going into a room and there's somebody in there and you want to come out again at the end of it. So you have to be a lot more careful and a lot more thoughtful. That's right. Fine. Thanks very much. You got your earmuffs? No. Go and fill them up. Do you want to go and come? Yeah, it's all right. Okay, I'm running down here. I'm running down here. Okay. Right. Can I ask you first of all, what's the object of the exercise the men go through here? Well, for today's training, it's uh, quite simple. We want the men to uh, refresh themselves on their basic searching techniques if they were to search a building for an armed suspect. It's as simple as that. How to search a building in the safest way for them as policemen and for anyone who might well be in that building. And you now use uh, television cameras to, to record it and play it back. Has, has the, uh, the, the video thing made a lot of difference to you here? This, is, this has proved really uh, successful. In the past, you see, uh, what has happened, giving a man basic training, he's never been able to see himself really through the eyes of, of an instructor. Uh, and it's a question of once he can see himself on screen afterwards, he realises at first hand the mistakes he has made and he never forgets them because he's seen it and he understands it. And that's the real benefit of the video. So do you think then when he goes out into real life he'll be able to cope better with a, a situation where he has to search a premises? Certainly I think it enhances his training. Uh, training can never create reality properly of course, but certainly I, I'm very pleased with it and so are the students. Smile? I'm just beg your pardon. Don't, neither, don't just lips. blank. I mean, neither smiling nor frowning. Right. Well, so and it doesn't matter what I say. Don't you don't say anything. anything. You nod, and I well, tell you what I had for breakfast, which was a cup of coffee and a cigarette in your canteen here, and uh, lunch will be a uh, pint in the hour. Okay. Okay. Well, and so on, and I chat away, and uh, I can use it to set you up over lunch. Coffee and croissant, meatloaf salad, shreddies, and um, what else can we have? Kippers. 17 Alex. shredded wheat. No, 
I love those dogs. They are crazy. Love them doggies. 